Hey, Carson Bible Church. It is time for our uh, Wednesday evening prayer meeting, so I would invite you to take your Bibles and turn to Psalm chapter 20. Uh, we had been studying quite a bit of Psalm chapter 19, and uh, even though today is the 19th, we're going to move on to Psalm 20. So I'll go ahead and read the passage. This is uh, to the choir master, a Psalm of David. It says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Well, this says that this was a psalm written by David, and uh, it may well have been written by David. Uh, it is also possible that uh, David was the one who uh, just recorded it, uh, because this was a psalm that was sung uh, before uh, the people were about to go into battle, before um, the king was to lead them into battle. And this is a song that the people would um, sing, that they would recite, um, asking that um, God would grant the king prosperity, um, or rather victory in battle. And uh, one of the interesting things that we see in the Old Testament is uh, if you look into uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we see some preparations for warfare as uh, King Jehoshaphat is about to lead his people into battle as uh, there are three approaching armies. And uh, one of the things that King Jehoshaphat says to the people is, he says, hear me, Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will succeed. And when he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy attire as they went before the army and say, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. King Jehoshaphat didn't put uh, his greatest warriors uh, at the front of the army, but uh, he encouraged the people to um, heed the prophets and he encouraged the people to be obedient to the word of God uh, primarily. And then who he put at the front of his army were a whole bunch of singers and they were singing praise to God. And uh, in case you uh, are curious about how that battle ends, I would encourage you to read the rest of Second Chronicles 20. Turns out uh, quite well for uh, Jehoshaphat and his people. And uh, so as we see here in Psalm 20, uh, this is a way of um, preparing the people for engaging in warfare and doing so by uh, singing this psalm, by reciting it. And uh, the psalm is broken down into really uh, three sections. Verses 1 through 5 are all a prayer for the king. The people would uh, recite or chant this as uh, a prayer for the king. Uh, the people knew that uh, their fate uh, was really the same as the fate of their king. And so their fortunes lied with the fortune of the king. And so verses 1 through 5 are all uh, this sung prayer that God would answer uh, the requests, uh, the prayer of the king, that God would uh, remember the king's faithfulness, remember the king's uh, dedication and worship, remember his sacrifices, um, that, uh, that uh, God would fulfill all of the king's petitions. Uh, the second section of this psalm is verses 6 through 8, and it is uh, remembering, the people remembering that uh, they're, or, or believing that they're uh, victory would be assured. And it says uh, that uh, they sing that they know that the Lord saves his anointed, that they know that the Lord will answer from his holy heaven and the Lord will save with the might of his right hand. And then to go on in verse 7 and say that uh, as the people are going into warfare and uh, the, the nations that they would be facing would trust in their chariots and in their horses, uh, but their trust is in the name of the Lord, their God, and that they are uh, completely confident that uh, as they lift up their king in prayer before God 
and uh, as they trust in the Lord their God above all else, that God will certainly assure them victory. And then it closes in verse 9 uh, just with this um, just with this quick last request, O Lord, save the king. May he answer us when we call. Uh, just a petition that God would, in fact, answer their requests and answer their prayers. So uh, Psalm 20 here is uh, just these three sections, um, a prayer for the king, uh, an assurance of victory, and uh, a request of answered prayer. Um, and as I said, this is a psalm that was sung uh, and before the people would go into battle. Um, and so for us today as the church, uh, the church doesn't have a standing army. Uh, we don't go into battle on battlefields with swords and spears and uh, shields and chariots and horses uh, like God's people did in the past. But um, I think it is important to remember that the church is in fact at war. Um, and uh, our uh, our great King is uh, King Jesus, and uh, it, what a what a great assurance that we know. Um, we don't just have to hope that God would uh, answer the prayers of our King, but we know that uh, Jesus Christ, as the God Man, um, He's our King. He is uh, fully human and also fully God. We know that God's good pleasure prospers in His hand. We don't have to just hope. For victory, uh, but we know that Jesus has already assured us victory as he uh, was on the cross and said, it is finished, as he rose from the grave, and uh, we see this uh, tangible evidence that uh, his victory over death and sin is absolutely sure, and then um, we do continue to cry out that God would answer our prayers, uh, answer our prayers for the church, as uh, the church is uh, in battle, the church is engaged in warfare, and I think it's important for us to remember that. But it's also important for us to remember what type of warfare we're engaged in and uh, what type of battle uh, we are facing. Um, the Apostle Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says that though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. And then in Ephesians 6, he says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Uh, our warfare is spiritual and our enemy is very real. And uh, I would just encourage you this evening as you meditate on this psalm, Psalm chapter 20, um, a song that would have been sung as people were getting ready to engage in battle with their enemy that... Um, we also are engaging in battle with our enemy. It's important for uh, you and I to remember um, who our King is, King Jesus, uh, who is both God and man, um, whose um, victory uh, for himself and for us is ultimately um, and decidedly secured. And uh, it's important for us to remember who our enemy is as, uh, as much as the church is engaged in warfare today. Uh, remember that our enemy is not flesh and blood, but our enemy is spiritual. And uh, we uh, are to uh, be on our knees in prayer and uh, offering prayer on behalf of the church, on behalf of our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we uh, follow the leadership of King Jesus into spiritual battle against uh, sin and death and the devil. So uh, I would encourage you to keep those things uh, in mind, to meditate upon those things as you uh, read this psalm and as you spend some time in prayer uh, this evening at your home. God bless you. We will see you soon.